Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. So looking at a bin that's been harvested for 10 days, harvest is over uh, about 10 days ago on this farm. Once you've got your sample from a, from a granary, you know, really you've got a temperature and a moisture reading from the, the day it went into the bin and hopefully you're, you've been keeping track of that so you can track if you've got any bins that will cause you some, some issues. And especially if the grain's gone in there hot, uh, above 15 degrees Celsius, or if it's gone in there, in there damp or tough, you really want to, you're going to have to keep an eye on those bins and do some extra work there. But for the bins that you you're think are, uh, are going to give you absolutely no trouble, it's still well worth monitoring those bins and checking those bins, bins for issues. So you're going to be limited by the fact that access points on a flat bottom bin are, are the door and the, and the access hatch. And you're also going to be limited to the fact that, that whatever grain probe you have, this is going to give you a snapshot of, of where this probe opens. So, you could isolate some hot spots in a, in a grain bin with, with, a, with a grain probe, but, but really you're going to look for probably a composite sample, stick this in the bin half a dozen times, get a sample that you can check for temperature and moisture. That's uh, actually really simple to look something like this, twist that to open it, and pull out a sample, drop it in your pail. You can probably do that again. Close it first so you get a representative sample of where that probe opens up in the bin. So probe in a granary you're you're limited to your access points and in this case it's the door or the the top access hatch and understand that it's only going to give you a representative sample where that probe opens. But at least it'll give you a bit of an idea what's happening inside the bin long before you start to realize that the snow isn't accumulating on top of one bin versus the rest. So talking about monitoring canola when it's in storage, uh, harvest is over about 10 days. With luck we've got uh, some hopper bottom bins behind us, they've got aeration set up to them, I don't know if the camera can spot that, but this bin happens to be aerated, hopper bottom, 4900 bushel bin, so reasonable value of canola on storage here. And canola at this farm went into the bin anywhere from probably 20 degrees Celsius to 39, so it, it quite a range in temperature. And the, the hotter stuff, the stuff that was a little more uh, suspect coming into the yard, went into bins where they would be easier to handle and had the aeration capacity here. But one of the neat things about some of the newer, uh, newer grain monitoring systems is that you've got some cables or some temperature sensors in the bin that you can keep track of what's happening in the bin after it's put in. So not only is it important to have that representative sample so you know what you've put in the bin, and have a pretty clear idea where you might have some trouble. But now we've got some cables in this bin. This bin happens to have one with five sensors on it that we can monitor what's happening in the bin, especially as we run some aeration and put some air to it. So it doesn't matter what system you've got on the farm. This one here has the capacity to, to store a number of bins information in it. I'm just going to go to the, to the bin that we're, we're looking at here and plug in that sensor. The last time we are at this bin, it was ranging from 23 to 11 with the coolest material down at the bottom. So as we take a look at this cable, uh, it was just this morning that the grower was checking this bin and it really hasn't changed much. We are still looking at 11.1 for a temperature on the bottom sensor up to about 23.5 on the top sensor. So it gives you a pretty clear picture as we're looking at the temperature profile in this bin that we've got about 10 degrees Celsius difference in this bin and, and the fan is going to come back on here um, and blow that until we've got it to a, a suitable temperature uh, throughout. So the moisture component, it's a little harder to store canola than some of the other grains that we have in Western Canada and the reason for that being is that canola is a really high oil crop. Uh, obviously we're growing it as an oil seed, that's our primary market. But as we edge that yeah. oil content up on the seed, it, it gets a little harder to store. And for every percentage increase in oil content on that seed, the safe percentage of moisture to store that seed probably edges down as well, probably by about a tenth of a percent. So the higher the oil content, or the more mature, the higher, the higher oil content seed that you might get out of a great harvest, might actually be a little more at risk for storage, uh, storage losses and, and moisture concerns as well. So, it's important to monitor that crop, make sure that the temperature comes down, 
and that it stays down through the rest of your storage period. So whether, whether you've got a monitoring system set up in the bin or whether you're needing to probe and, and check, those, uh, check that canola as, as you're augering it, there really is no set time that you're going to have to monitor your bins on a, on a weekly or, or, or a schedule that, that someone can dictate to you. What you really need to know is that it's an interaction of the time that you're going to keep that grain on storage, the temperature and the moisture that it went in. So the higher the temperature, the higher the moisture, the more frequent you're going to have to monitor that, that canola in storage. So if you've got a nice system that can, can give you an idea of what's happening in the bin without disturbing it, great. If not, you're going to need to pull some, some canola out and take, take the temperature of that, that canola as it's, as it's augering or as you pull some samples off of it and get a bit of an idea. It's uh, one of the first indications, especially if you're in a, in a risky scenario, is that when the canola starts to clump up, it's not that far away from spoilage. So you, you, if, you're, if you're noticing at any point that the canola is starting to clump up and maybe set up or stand up a little bit, you're at a really high risk situation at that point. So moving that canola around probably isn't enough to break up that kind of a problem, but at least it gives you an idea before you see any other visual symptoms that, that you've got a concern. And, Every year across the prairies, you're going to find some bin, some grower somewhere that's lost a bin of canola because it's heated and he's unaware of it. So often that'll be just a hot spot coming out of the slough bottom or some green material that, you know, just didn't happen to keep track of as it went into a bin. But it's a really sad to go through the, the, the risk of seeding and spraying and maybe a fungicide application and harvest, put it in the bin and forget about it really isn't the best option for a grower today.